Hey guys, I'm super thrilled and excited. We've got a special guest uh, for you guys today that's going to give you a lot of knowledge on the technology side. Um, she is Caroline Hobbs. So welcome to the program, Caroline. Uh, lots of deep background in the real estate business, has owned a brokerage for 10 years, and she's a technology specialist, just launched her own technology solution for agents and brokers as well. So excited to talk to you today, Caroline. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. So let's uh, just for the listeners and the people that are watching, kind of let's go back in time and give us a little background on how you got into the business and what that starting point was for you. Absolutely. So I am a third generation real estate professional. My grandfather was in the business. My mother has been in lending for almost 40 years now and is getting ready to retire. And um, as much as I swore up and down that I would never follow the family business of real estate, um, in college, my junior year, I started working for a realtor in Palo Alto and began my career. Wow. So you've been yeah. doing it a long time. Yeah, I, I, it's been about 15 years now. Wow. And so <laughs> what what triggered you to go from being a, an agent uh, over to the brokerage ownership side? Because that's a big transition for a lot of people. What was that motivation for you? Absolutely. Um, so previously, I was with one of the major the big brokerages that's international. And in all honesty, my mentor was number one internationally with this company for many years. So um, I like to say that I stole all the knowledge that I possibly could. And, you know, I was very fortunate to have an excellent mentor and, you know, get a lot of hands-on experience that I probably wouldn't have gotten if I was on a less productive team. Sure. Um, so starting out at the, the large brokerage house. Um, the training was wonderful, um, but after I left the team that I was on, I didn't feel as much connected to the rest of the brokerage. And um, at the time I was quite a bit younger than everybody else in the office. Um, I got my broker's license at 21 years old. Wow. Um, so it's, it, it was hard to connect with people. And ultimately, I was teaching a lot of classes on database and database management because of my experience working with the other agent. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt like I was giving a lot more than I was getting. Um, mm -hmm. And so that kind of pushed me towards the uh, independent brokerage track. Gotcha. And so yeah. you're in uh, based in San Jose, uh -huh. California. So a highly competitive market, obviously. And starting a real estate brokerage is uh, no, uh, you know, not for the faint hearted in that market. I, I've taught a lot of classes there. Um, uh -huh. And what what is because everybody that starts a brokerage, you know, they're, they're always thinking about what's going to be my differentiation point? How am I going to attract agents and keep agents in my company? And what's that been for you? Because obviously you had the technology background. What, what are you bringing to the table to help these agents to win and compete in that highly competitive market? Absolutely. So, um People work with people that they know, like, and trust. And that's as a brokerage when agents are choosing where they want to go and work. But that's also for the consumers as well, like buyers and sellers. Um, building that trust is often the challenge for a lot of people. Um, we use a lot of different marketing measures to really help um, solidify, you know, exactly who we are in the community. We give back to the community a lot. Um, and through community events, um, such as the Morgan Hill Easter egg hunt, um, we do sledding with Santa where we actually bring in ice from like the ice rink and they come and spray it down and the kids go down and we have Santa there and there's photos. It's a whole thing. Um, but events like that. And then also in the summer, we've done backpack giveaways, um, things like that. We're also super involved with the, um, with the local board. So these kind of activities have really helped us become more present in the mm -hmm. community. And I think ultimately that's helped me grow my brand as a brokerage, but also my brand as an agent. And um, so we support our agents with helping plan these activities. We give them templates and access to all of this information so that we can support them in growing their own events as well. Um, however, at the company events, they come, we, I think our Easter egg hunt this last year, we had about 1400 people come. Huge. Um, yeah. So my agents, they all had a reward realty, bright 
t-shirt that we had made up for them. So that way they were easily distinguishable and they were able to float around and, and talk to members of the community, swap contact information and generate leads that way as well. I love it. So the community minded and being, creating a culture of community mindedness. Uh, Absolutely. That's great. Let's talk about, because uh, your specialization is on the technology side, let's talk about technology. Because before yeah. the program we were talking about, you you gave me the stat that 80% of uh, people that sell their home don't use the same agent that they bought the home from. And obviously the, there's a disconnect there and we got to fix that disconnect. I know you have some strategies for doing that. How do you- Absolutely, how do you- yeah. So we lean very heavily on tech. Um, it is easy to get busy or get caught up on something and forget, you know, to call and follow up with someone. Um, so we have built out a very strong pillar situ- uh, system with some of the top real estate software companies out there. Um, we also have an amazing development team that has built underneath these systems. So they have enhanced syncing between programs. And essentially, we use these to help our agents um, support and scale their businesses by um, providing a clear-cut way for clients to come into their database, to interact, stay in touch with them, um, and then also a clear path towards the transaction and educating your client at every step during the transaction. And so what I mean by that is as soon as you go and go under contract, we have scripts for videos that agents can record. So that way they can tell their clients, hey, look, this is what's going to happen next. Um, always staying on top of it. We also have a project underway where we're going to be creating a client portal that actually changes throughout the transaction, giving you all of this information and also syncing all of your documents into a central hub. So, um, we're expecting that to be completed end of Q1 next year, but um, we do have a waiting list for that product already. Um, it should be really, really exciting and um, bring a new way way about um, agents making that connection with their clients. But furthermore, because you asked about how we're going to be using these systems to you know keep in touch and generate more business. Right. So there's there's marketing aspects to this as well. So as part of the transaction and these trigger points that I talked about, we'll have different marketing efforts that go out as well um, through direct mail, uh, retargeting, and Google pay per click. Hmm. Um, so these are a great, really great tool, and we're actually working on a new partnership with a company called Lolo, which stands for Local Supporting Locals, hmm. as another way to stay top of mind with our past clients. Um, this is a really, really cool new company. They're just starting to build up. And essentially what they do is they um, are able to send out to your database like a monthly coupon to a local eatery or ref or whatever. Um, maybe it's like a craft store or something like that. And so it helps support local businesses. It also supports you know, your mission of staying in contact with your clients and providing value and right. um, you know, win-win situation. So this is interesting because I think when I'm uh, part of my services, I do brokerage coaching across the country from brokerages. Um, and one of the things that comes up a lot is the tech stack yeah. and having a competitive tech stack. Obviously, you built one out and you got some proprietary things you're doing underneath that. But look, just as a broker to broker kind of recommendation, what do you think are, are the most important aspects of your tech stack? I mean, do you provide, for instance, agent websites, CRM? Um, like follow up boss, that kind of thing. What, what, exactly. what does it look like for you? I mean, for your for your company, because you're obviously on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, our two main pillar programs right now are follow up boss and open to close. Um, open to close is a little. Are you familiar with it? It's a little bit. Okay, so it's um, a new type of transaction management program. It's not where you go to write contracts, but it. Um, it is a trigger-based program that really helps you um, create forms that adapt to the individual contract and mm-hmm. transaction. So for example, on our listing intake form, one of the things it asks is, does this property have a well? And so if the well is marked, it will indicate the need for a well inspection, and it will also um, prompt the need for the well disclosures to go into the property disclosures oh. on the track list. So um, it's, you know, it's a very dynamic 
program and it really, you know, kind of works its way towards the individual contract in place. Um, so we built some custom code for better integration. Basically, my agents only work out of follow up boss. Our support staff only works out of open to close. And then the portal that we're building, um, that's the client side of it. So they get to see everything that we're doing on the back end with follow up boss and open to close, but syncing it towards the client view and giving them access to that as well. Every agent have a website at your company or do they bring their own website to the table? Um, so with follow up boss, because it don't, it doesn't come with a website, we partnered with agent fire mm -hmm. um, and we have a template with agent fire that you can, um, that we, that gets branded and customized to your team as you're onboarded onto our tech stack. Mm -hmm. um, they do have the option of adding additional um, custom pages and custom work and things like that. And so if you would like to make your website more custom or add more bells and whistles or anything like that, it's totally customizable. And honestly, your imagination is probably the only limiting factor. Gotcha. What about, um, so using follow boss as, as your CRM kind of back, mm -hmm. backbone. What about um, one thing that we we use is a, a, a CMA platform like Cloud CMA or something like that. Is that something that's a part of your tech stack as well? Um, so we currently have clients um, on HomeBot. HomeBot, yep. Um, Great system. Yeah. I have, I wish that I liked Cloud CMA more. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the best. I agree. <laughs> I just feel like the data is really lacking, and that's the main purpose of a CMA. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have a call later today with a really interesting company that um, a fellow broker recommended to me. Um, I'm excited to interview them to replace HomeBot, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. one of the one thing you brought up was the idea of your agents doing videos and prompting them to do videos. Yeah. How is that uh, met in your office? Because that's one struggle that brokerage owners and leaders have is getting your agents to do video, right? So are you, do you have great yeah. penetration with that or is it, is it a mix or how does that, how is it looking for your office? So um, that's more of like a brokerage. I have like two different sides to the business. And so I try to like divide them up. But for the yeah. brokerage side, it's a great question. Um, and as I grow like my team and everything like that, I am always encouraging them to get in front of the camera. We have been fortunate enough to set up a full in-office studio. So we have all of the studio lighting, professional, um, you know, cameras, equipment, mics, everything like that. So that way, um, and the backdrops and all of that, they're all in our conference room. And so our agents are able to book a time um, to use that at any point in time. And then we have a list of um, editing uh, guys that we can recommend to our agents. So that way they can just take the raw footage and turn it into whatever they want. Wow. So are you, is that a charge for your agents or is that a part of your services? Cause at my office, we have both. So yeah. we have a social media studio. They can come in, they can shoot for free or mm -hmm. our team will edit it for them. Is that kind of similar to your approach? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. So they're welcome to just take the raw, the filming itself is no additional cost. However, if they do want it edited or want to have anything extra put in, it's generally an extra cost. Same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So um, kind of the the marketing side of the business, because marketing has become such a huge aspect. So you got one one issue of like lead gen, right? Which you're, you guys look, sounds like you you got a good handle on. What about the marketing side of listings? Um, is that something where you have an outside marketing team that comes in and helps your agents for a fee or do you have your own internal marketing team or how does that look for your office? Yeah, um, it depends on what aspect you're talking about. So for um, our print, I actually have set it up into our tech stack. Um, and one of the things I'm working on is because I realize that not everybody is going to want to use the exact same vendors that I use. Yeah. Um, and so we do have a few options for most things that you can choose from. Um, and then I think probably the most exciting thing about signing on with our tech stack for most people is that we take on that CTO, CTO role. So in six months from now, when a new program comes out and you want to incorporate that instead of one of the programs that it came built out on, we will set up that integration for you. 
Mm, gotcha. As long as there's an API and it goes through Zapier, we'll connect it and make sure that it gets set up to your lead flow and is connected in it, whether it's part of the transaction stages or if it's a part of the buying or selling process. We'll get that incorporated for you and, and so that you don't have to worry about reinventing the wheel with your with your systems. Got it, got it, got it. So in terms of um, your agents and stay in contact with their with their database, are you giving them a template like, okay, for the next five years, here's what your your game plan is? Is that exactly. how it looks? Yes. Yeah. So essentially when a lead get comes into the database, it's determined whether based on the uh, lead flow that it came from, whether mm -hmm. it's a buyer or a seller. Um, and that differentiates what action plan it would go on. And so basically the action plan is um, broken down into stages, but it gives the outline of how the client's going to be followed up with from phone calls to text messages to emails. Um, it kind of encompasses all of it. So for example, um, lead day, that's day one in our database. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't get on the phone with them, you leave them you know, marked as lead and they'll automatically uh, get moved to this next stage of attempted contact and so and so forth. Um, and they move down into a nurture stage, which lasts about 14 months. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and that whole time we have an AI that runs in the background and is constantly reaching out to people, um, trying to reinvigorate old stale leads and see if we can find some new business from them. So mm -hmm. that's been really helpful as well. Are you guys using any kind of, um, so the AI is definitely, I, I think going to be a game changer in the industry. So it's an interesting you're using that. Um, are you also using uh, ISAs, like an internal sales agent to do follow up or is that is that the agent responsibility? It's our agent's responsibility to call their um, clients. We meet once a week, we sit down with them and go over all of the leads that have come in that, path, that week, um, see where they're at. We look at the last couple of weeks see where those clients are at as far as the buying process. And then we prioritize who we're going to be um, getting in contact with and identifying like the most warm opportunities. Now, let's say that an agent, I'm just curious about this from a brokerage end of it. Agent meets somebody at an open house, you know, mm -hmm. didn't come from um, an online lead. Yeah. Uh, their responsibility to come back to the office, put them in to follow up boss so that triggers the, the tech stack to go to work. Is that correct? It is. Um, however, we're con we're actually currently um, demoing a new process for open houses. Um, are you familiar with digital business cards like Popple? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So Popple has these buttons. They're like probably about four inches. Um, they used to have them at restaurants during COVID, you know, to scan for the menu and whatnot. Right, so yeah. we actually have started um, creating like a business page for each listing that has that links out to the disclosures it links out to the 360 tour it links out to school information um, it links to comparable sales in the neighborhood all of that information and nice. essentially when they put their phone over the QR and it pops up there's going to be there's a sign in so it says open house sign in please sign in to proceed um, and then once they go into Popple, they will then get automatically assigned into follow up boss and then put right onto the drip. Gotcha. Well, that's very clean. Nice, nice. I love yeah. it. So, um, but it, but from another source, so not open houses, yeah. you, you yeah, got yeah, that yeah. figured out. But another source, they would have to hand in rent, I'm assuming. Exactly. Um, follow up boss has a really easy app. So they make it pretty, you open it up. And the first thing you see, or at least the first thing I see is a round circle in the bottom right hand corner with a big plus button on it. And that's how you add a contact. And as soon as you do that, even if it's just a name um, and maybe like an email and you don't have the phone number, again, the AI is going to be reaching out to them to try and complete that information and make sure that we're communicating with them well. Gotcha. So with your agents and um, and their use of this, their adoption of this, is there do you have a big onboarding training process you're walking people through saying, OK, let's teach you how to use all these systems? It's all automated. Um, for the most part, my agents get an email each morning with a hot sheet of clients that they are scheduled to sign up with, um, which includes new leads that have come in the day before. And then, you know, just people that are at the different place in the sequence where they need to get touched again um, to see if they're ready to transact. But it's built in a way where it's it can be very hands-off and continue to work. Um, 
you basically make changes to it when you start talking to the client. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so it, it just, other than that, it just keeps moving them through the system automatically. So, um, I mean, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. So it's so, and that's why I say my agents only have to work out a follow-up boss. Mm -hmm. All of the information that's needed in the other program syncs cross-functionally. Got it. Got it. hundred percent. So we're not, we're not developing three, going and putting in information in three different areas. We're going one spot. It just all flows. Yeah. So you're zapping all that information around. So with your, um, with your, because you must be able to see, or uh, you know, from a ten thousand foot level, everything that's happening with all the agents in real time from your master level follow up boss mm-hmm. account, right? Yes. So when you're looking at that, are you are you? I'm sure you're doing this, but are you tracking like what's our close percentage on online leads and those kinds of things? Are we up? Are we down? And mm-hmm. are you? Is that something you're looking at every day, every week, every month? Do you have a t- schedule time for that? I mean, how's that look for you? You know, prior to using um, prior to using Open to Close, we were working with a, co- a company called Sisu, S I F S U. Very very similar program as far as how it's used. Sisu ha- did have a better reporting dashboard and allowed you to track more of those metrics. Yeah. With Open to Close, the way it currently is, it's very similar to Follow Up Boss, where you know it doesn't try and be something it's not. Mm-hmm. It's um, and you build it out to suit your business. So um, some of the things that it doesn't do, do are like it doesn't do commissions. Mm-hmm. It doesn't and it doesn't do um, document signing it, yeah. and it's never going to. And that's fine. Um, but it's about finding the right partners to integrate, to bridge those gaps, because it does, just because they don't do it doesn't mean we don't need it. <laughs> right. Yeah. What do you, does that, does open to close act as your document management system then and your broker, you broker deals in um, open to close or no? Yeah, it's our, it's our uh, checklist. It has all of our document checklists in it. It's houses, um, compliance and everything like that. And then it also um, acts as the storage for all of our documents. Similar to like Skyslope. I don't know if you're familiar with Skyslope probably or, or, or dot loop for instance, maybe. Yeah. You know, I've, I would say trying software out is kind of like a part-time hobby of mine Yeah, yeah. or a full-time hobby, depending on who you ask. <laughs> um, I have been users of both Skyslope and dot loop. I've tried DocuSign rooms. Mm-hmm. I have <laughs> you know, oh. used all the lone wolf technologies. Um, my favorite document signing program to this day is Glide. Um, wow. The problem with got Glide, and you know, I see this with a lot of software companies, and it's kind of a it, it's a huge distinguishing factor to me. I will no longer partner with companies that do not have a clear open API and gives me access to be able to do uh, two way syncs. Yeah. And basically that's the be all end all. If you don't have that, then doesn't work. I'm sure your system is great, but I'm <laughs> also sure that somebody else is going to rip it off and make it a more open system. That's more, you know, cross-functionally compatible. Right, right, right. Yeah. You gotta have that open door both ways, right? Yeah. I, so I think in real estate and especially with tech and real estate, um, we've all heard the saying, you know, uh, a, a jack of all trades is a master of none or like a master of none right you're right. yeah a master of none yeah so it's like it's the same thing with tech as soon as you start trying to encompass and do everything under the sun like a company like chime and kv core mm-hmm. it becomes really clunky it cuts down on your ability to integrate in different areas and is that good for some agents who are less technologically like savvy? It can be. It certainly seems like it is because it's less programs you have to buy and it's all in one place. Mm-hmm. However, um, realtors are, re- like I said, realtors are buying this thinking it's the better solution because they're less techie and it might seem like a better option because you're getting all of these different areas of the business all in one tool. Mm -hmm. but really what you're left with is something that functions just not 
Not great. <laughs> Not great. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, and the fact of the matter is, is you look at a lot of these companies and their client life cycle is eight months, maybe 12 months. Right. And then the client moves on versus, and that's one of the reasons why our vendors are so supportive of what we're doing is they see the value in this. They see, you know, with systems built out like this, there's no reason for people to leave. They can lifetime stay value. for years. Yeah. Lifetime value of the client's huge if you, if you manage it well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, with, uh, so one thing when you, when you say the word technology, realtors always jump to social media. I mean, that's like their, their go-to like, and we haven't even touched social media yet. And yep. you've got some other things you're talking about, but th let's touch on social media for a minute. Um, with social media, are you, uh, is that something you're helping agents manage? Are they manage that themselves? What's that look like for your company? I have a lot of mixed feelings on real estate marketing and real estate marketing companies. Mm -hmm. um, not to hate on one company in particular, but yeah, yeah. Um, we'll just say there is a real estate marketing company out there who partnered with one, a fabulous salesperson to write a book called Exactly What to Say for Real Estate Agents. Yep. Okay. Yep. They partnered with this company. I was a client, a marketing client of theirs, read the book, put the two and two together. Not a single one of our campaigns that was uploaded into my system contained the language from the book. Hmm. So when you say practice what you preach, I expect that, you know? Yes. Um, and so when it comes to marketing, I think that um, there's a lot of room for improvement for marketing agencies out there. Um, I don't feel that I, I don't feel like many realtors are using these professional systems because of the expense behind them. Um, for example, with that one company, I was paying $2,200 a month, just in management fees. Wow. That's before that, ad spend, that's like before ad costs, right? Anything else like, wow. $2,200 a, a month it's and a it is a lot, but if you go and talk to other companies, it's not wildly different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think if you're going to be looking at like a paid marketing manager for your social media and for your ads, um, because to me, those two go very much hand in hand, mm -hmm. um, you're looking at spending $1,500, $1,600 upwards. Um, yeah. just depending on how many platforms you want them to manage as well. Mm -hmm. um, so your question was, do I manage that? Do I support that? I fully support everybody in their social media endeavors. I have mm -hmm. not come up with systems behind making that easier. However, if you look at my whiteboard, I do have some ideas in place of how we can incorporate that into the system for at least transactional postings yeah, um, yeah. and thing, things like that. So um, to be determined, but I think that we're looking at more marketing solutions in V2 or V3. Got it. Got it. Okay. That's, it's, it's a complicated beast for sure. So with it your, really yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> a tough monster and every agency unique and how they want to approach their clients and how they want to grow. And it's just different mm -hmm. um, with your company pages though. So just from a brokerage owner, team leader kind of aspect. Yeah. I'm sure you're managing that yourself, I'm guessing, or you have somebody doing it. Yeah. Uh, and and what does that look like for you? Is that something you guys, uh, you know, you, you, I'm sure you're on Instagram and Facebook and all the standard stuff, LinkedIn. Um, are you guys doing TikTok? Are you doing YouTube shorts? Are you doing you know, you have a YouTube channel for your company? What does it look like for you guys? We have all of those. <laughs> we've got a TikTok, <laughs> we've got Instagram, we've got Facebook. Um, we put out videos on all of these. We do try different media avenues. Uh, we've partnered with a company doing street interviews in the past. Um, so we made some street style interviews with people. Um, you know, we go to a local mall and say, hey, what do you think this house is worth? Or, hey, like, do you want a home in Silicon Valley? What do you do for a living? <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. asking those uncomfortable questions that people are really curious about. Right. Um, so we definitely make you know, things like that. Um, we have a lot of videos, you know, the standard 10 steps to buying a home, why to work with a realtor, what's great about Morgan Hill, what's great about San Jose, what's great about Gilroy. Um, we make a lot of local content like that. 
Yeah. Um, kind of a little bit of everything. Uh, I would not say that our social media is anywhere near the systemized masterpiece <laughs> that I have in other areas that I always, um, one of the things when I'm talking about our tech stack that I always say is like, you would be surprised at top producing agents and it's like their heads on fire as soon as they get into a transaction, trying to organize everything and get it. And that's what we fix. Yeah. For social media, I am that chicken with my head cut on, on fire right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> and same with marketing in general. It is, I kind of take on these um, mantras mm -hmm. every six months or so. Sometimes it's once a year. It just kind of lasts different amounts of time. But one of the big things that um, I think I'm just coming out of is capitalizing on um, no missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was making sure that it was easy to get people into the database. It was easy to have them communicated with. It was easy for them to feel that individual level of attention. And so that's kind of, that was one of the things that I was working on previously. Now I'm kind of moving into a, how do we, sh how do we show people who we are? Yeah no secret agents. <laughs> right, right. right. I love you know? it. And so, yeah. so that's kind of, and I think that goes hand in hand, even with like reviews. Mm -hmm. um, so looking at ways of how you can boost your presence, both organically and with paid marketing, we just created these little cards um, to give to people. It says, congratulations on your closing. And it has like the five-star review and it's an NFT card that when you hold it over your phone, it takes you to our Google page. So clients can right there, um, leave you a review. Also, you can keep one of these in your wallet. So nice. if you're out with clients, you can pull it out and be like, Hey, do you, do you mind doing me a favor real quick? Do you mind just leaving me a quick review on my Google business okay. page? Yeah. Wait for those euphoric moments. Here's a card. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, I'm so happy you said that. Yeah, <laughs> Here, please tell the world about how fabulous I am. <laughs> right. Right. I love it. So um, first of all, you've dropped a lot of great, great ideas in a very, very short period of time. I think there's going to be a lot of notes being taken about how you're approaching the business and, and how you're running such a successful company. But let's say that somebody wants to get in contact with you. They want to refer you business because you're doing a great job. They want to refer your company business. They want to come to work for you because you look like you're running an amazing company. Um, yeah. They just want to maybe plug into your software at some point when you release that. Um, how do people find you and, and connect with you? So I am very Googleable. <laughs> Um, but also email, email or phone is always the best way to get in contact with me. I'm always happy to, um, jump on a call with people. I do have a 30 minute demo link, um, in my Calendly, which I'll, um, go ahead and, and get that to you to post at the end of this video. Right. Um, that's another great way to, to get onto my calendar so that we can talk more about how I can support you. Fantastic. Well, it was yeah. absolutely a pleasure to meet you and have you on the program, Caroline. You did amazing. Thank you. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great opportunity.